like a shout to the God of Jacob. Raise a song and strike the timbrel, the pleasant harp with the lute. Blow the trumpet at the time of the new moon, at the full moon on our solemn feast day. But this is a statute for Israel, a law of the God of Jacob. This he established in Joseph as a testimony when he went throughout the land of Egypt. When I heard a language I did not understand, I removed his shoulder from the burden. His hand the you called in trouble, and I delivered you. I answered you in the secret place of thunder. I tested you at the waters of Mariba. Hear, O oh my people, and I will admonish you. O oh, Israel, if you would listen to me, there shall be no foreign god among you, nor shall you worship any foreign god. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide, and I will fill it. But my people would not heed my voice, and Israel would have none of me. So I gave them over to their own stubborn heart to walk in their own counsels. All that my people would listen to me, that Israel would walk in my ways. I would soon subdue their enemies and turn my hand against their adversaries. The haters of the Lord would pretend submission to him, but their fate would endure forever. He would have fed them also with the finest of wheat and with honey from the rock. I would have satisfied you. Amen. Praise God for the word of God. And we bless the Lord for this word. Amen. But we're going to begin at Psalms 81, verse 8. We're going to start at verse 8. And it says, Hear, O people, and I will admonish you. If you hear me, I'll advise you. I will instruct you. I will warn you. If you would hear me, and this is what God is saying. Admonish me, instruct, to warn, to advise. And we only want advice if it line up with the way that I have have it going on inside of me. If your counsel agrees with what I have going on inside of me, I will take heed to it. But if it does not line up with the way that I feel and the way that I think, then I don't want it. And I believe you know, reading this today, just thinking, this is how we get in trouble because we seek out people that going to give us what we want to hear, that's going to be on the same page with us. We're not seeking for good, you know, for the betterment of ourselves and our walk with Christ. Amen. But he said, I'm, I'll instruct you. I'll counsel you, I'll advise you. So what better instructions, what better counsel, what better advice can we get from God? There's no better counsel. And yes, God uses us. Ordinary people, God uses us to minister, to counsel to instruct each other. The problem with us is that we don't honor God in each other. We have our set people. We have the people that we have selected that, that we want to hear from. And if, it, if it's not coming from them, we will turn it. People will call you. 
and they'll tell you what T.D. Jakes is saying. They'll tell you just like God ain't using nobody but these uh, mega folk. But when it comes to people that we see every day, we know how they walk and we know how they're living. We cannot accept it. But this is God. This is God using you to instruct me, to counsel me, to give me advice. But will I hear it? Amen? Anybody worry right there? The Amen, that, Pastor Fleming. I just um, reinforce, you know, what you're saying in that, you know, um, I can honestly say that that I was guilty in, in hearing, um, you know, once hearing uh, the ones that, that that I wanted to hear, and really and and kind of bypassing those that um, even if they they if they they if their uh, delivery was different than what I was used to, or um, for whatever reason rejected the things that they were that I wouldn't say rejected, but just wasn't listening to what they were saying. Just that the scriptures say, if you would listen. Uh, or if you were here, uh, if you would listen to me uh, 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 in, in accordance with uh, uh, verse 8. But um, it's so important that we be able to um, to hear the word of God because, again, uh, I heard Pastor Parker talking a little bit uh, earlier this morning, and he was just saying, you know, even from from unbelievers that we'll be able to hear you know the word of the Lord. Uh, if 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 we're really listening, Amen. Uh, and, and some people say, well, how can you hear the word of God from an unbeliever? But God is always speaking to us, and sometimes you know there are nuggets in in, in the things that people are, are are saying. So I just, you know, uh, but we have to be in position uh, to listen, Amen. Because it's if you will listen. So it, you know, again, we can whether it be in in in, in the wind or uh, in the rain or whatever, but we, if, if, we, if we are listening and if we're willing to listen, uh, we will certainly uh, hear God. Amen? Amen. And I think we, we've we all been right there, whether we acknowledge it, whether we uh, profess it. Amen? Um, we've all been right there where, because uh, I have a, a, a real big problem, you know, but God will refine you. He'll refine you, and, and I, you still have people today that if people don't have hoopla with their message, they call that a dead message. If people stand flat-footed and could be giving you a dynamic, a powerful word, people cannot receive it because there's not a skip and a jump. There's not a holler with it. They call it a dead word. Amen. But God is refining us. He's bringing us to a place, and he's moving off all that callous, callousness off of us, amen, and refining us and, and making us who he would have us to be if we would allow him to. Amen? Amen. He said, if you would listen to me. And the word says if because there is a chance that we won't listen. We won't hear. But we have a need to hear the word of God. It is the only thing that's going to do us any good. The only thing. Amen? Amen. There shall be no foreign God among you, nor shall you worship any foreign God. I don't bow down to nothing else. I mean, I, I worship the living God. I don't that I am, but let me tell you, amen, anything where that, that takes up our affection and our time, that, that, that place where we spend so much time in meditation on, and I'm telling you, it does not have to be God. It does not have to be his word. Amen. We got people, amen, that have idolized people, just plain People that breathe through their nostrils, amen, that go to the bathroom just like you do. But we have idolized these people and put them up before God. They actually have put their trust and their confidence in man. And this is not to say that we can't um, um, trust somebody else or put your confidence in and believe them and what they're saying because you watch their lives. That's not what I mean. But when you don't bypass God, 
You don't bypass his instruction. I bypass his counsel to to come to you because I ain't heard that man say nothing for me. So I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna get me somebody that I can hear and that I can trust in. Okay, you just made that person your God. That could be your mama, your daddy, your sister, your brother. It could be anybody. It could be anything because where you spend your time, that's what we made our God. Amen. Amen. But we we want to trust in the living God. We want to put our confidence in the living God because he is the one that can help us. Why would we put our whole heart into somebody that's going to lay down and die like me? Jesus died, but he rose again. That's why we have life today. So this is where we should put our, our trust. This is where my heart belongs. Because he has all the answers. And we may not believe it. People be calling around trying to get this over here, trying to see what this one is saying. What do you say about it? Tell me what you think. What you think? Go to God. And it's okay to seek counsel. There's safety in the multitude of counselors. And I'm not talking about people that just yakking, but godly counsel. Amen? Anybody? Amen. 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 Um, I'll uh, read this, Pastor Fleming, um, and just, you know, just really, uh, I mean, just at, at listening to uh, verse 8 again, and it says, hear, you know, we see the word hear, and it says, oh, my people. So, we again, talking to his people, he said, and I will admonish you. And, you know, you even you even went on to the, 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 the latter part of that, and saying, uh, oh, Israel, if you would listen. So he's saying hear and listen. So to say both of those things lets us know that there's a difference between hearing and listening. Amen. But the, 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 uh, another point that I'm trying to make is that he says if, if we hear, he will admonish us. And when we think about that word admonish, we need to know that it's, it's talking about that I will warn you. Amen. I will warn you. Amen. Or caution you, if you will. I will I, that I'll caution you. And we need to know that in life there are some cautions. And, and you know, we talked about last night on the line how there's some vessels of honor, how there's some vessels of dishonor. But if we're not listening to the Lord, we we won't know the warning. We won't know, Amen. Where, where He's cautioning us um, not 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 to uh, not to make this investment or not to make that investment or not to do this. But we, if we're not hearing Him. And, and, amen. So, but he goes on to say, uh, if you would listen to me, you know. And I, I, I just, uh, I, again, I love, I love the word. And just that, as you picked up in nine, he says, there shall be no a foreign god among you, amen. So, if, 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 in order for it not to be a foreign god among you, the only way we're gonna know it's foreign if we're hearing and listening to what God has to say, amen. 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 Pastor Fleming. Yes, sir. I feel that we don't listen because we are not dying to ourselves. Yes. We're so busy listening to the, the the world, and and we listen to the world because we have not died to ourselves. But God is telling us to, uh, through His Son Jesus that if we listen, if we listen, God will listen, uh, will will speak to us. And when he speaks to us, we will hear him. Amen. But it says here in, 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 in verse 11, it says, but the people will not heed my voice. And we can't heed it if we're busy listening to what the world has to say. Amen. And I believe if we can start listening to what God has to say to us, then we will be a much better off because he's not going to tell us nothing wrong. Amen. But we want to listen to the world. Amen. And, and that's how we that's how we get ourselves caught up in certain things because and, and with certain people that that comes out to be this this God with this little G. It's because we mm-hmm. have to pass God's counsel. We bypass His warnings. Yes. 
end up with with these little people, these little gods being our our God, so to speak, you know, because you know we 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 fail to hear amen All right well, Pastor Fleming, so many people go searching and looking for a word and stuff, and younger Christians tend to listen to their pastors and they hear a word from their pastor and they hear something that resonates with what they're going through and until they until their faith is strengthened, they listen they know to listen to know the voice of God, but they have to get it from you know regular man everyday churches i mean they they don't know. They don't know that, that God's the way, and until they learn, they get it from man, who they see every day, whom they trust, who's telling them how to study and build your faith, build your faith, build your faith. Amen. That's, 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 that's why we have to follow after God. We have to follow after mm-hmm. God, and a lot of times people come to, um, uh, they come to the sanctuary, they just come. They don't bring their Bibles. They don't follow along. And a lot of times they're really not listening because this is the way of the old thing that we used to do. We just come. We just go and we we hear what we want to hear. And most times pastors, preachers, uh, leaders or whoever, they're, they're doing some, 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 some people are really doing the best that they can do. And they're giving you the best out of themselves, amen, but we need to have a hunger for this thing, and when we get a hunger for this thing, God will start opening up, and then you'll get the seat that you're, you're sitting there, and you're not really getting what you need, you'll get up and go somewhere else where and get you some food to eat, amen, but until you get that hunger, you're going to sit right there and eat peanut butter and jelly sandwiches every day, because you don't have a hunger, you know, that. Mm-hmm. Just there. Amen. I like to say this because that's even is so important for you to read the word, you know. Just don't go by what somebody say because, you know, it's different. People have different things they say. So the Bible is full of feeling. So it's, that's when it's so, so important for you to stay in the word. Amen. We, we have to read it. But I'm telling you, I know God called me in the past. But I don't, I don't have that, that thing that even apostle has, amen. So we got to be willing to hear when somebody breaks this thing down to us because do you understand everything you read? But you need to read it. You need to read it so that God will bring it back. You know, a lot of people get mad at the computers and say, well, this thing is doing this and it's doing that. But, you know, it's only spitting out what you don't put in it. You can't, you can't put out what's not in it, amen? So when we get the word inside of us, when we need it, God will bring it to our remembrance. Then he said, oh, yeah, I read that. But we need somebody. God has anointed, he's called, he has equipped some people, amen, but are we willing to follow, amen? And once you get you get in there and you start reading for yourself, you start looking up some stuff on your own, amen, and, and God just uh, open up your understanding and you'll start reading and it's almost like you're just eating almost, amen. But there, there, has, to, there has to be a hunger, amen, and God has to be living inside of us, amen, because he'll want more. He has to be living inside of us and the trouble with some of us, we have not yet received the Lord Jesus inside of us. But when we get him inside of us, there's something that's going to be reaching up for more, reaching up for more. Amen? Amen. The, the word says, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide and I will fill it. And I kind of wanted to know, you know, okay, what's, what's that about? And so I read this. It says it was a custom in, in Persia that when the king um, did um, honors to a visitor, he, he would have them open their mouth wide, and then he would cram it full of sweet meats and, and jewels. And it says even to this day it is uh, a mark of polite.
likeness in Orianus to tear off dainty bits of meat for a guest and either lay them before him or put them in his mouth. Well, you know what? We have God, the, 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 the actual bread of our lives, amen, our eternal life. We have him to fill us. If we would open up our mouth, amen, and receive what the Lord has given unto us. But we're so filled and so constipated, amen, with the stuff from these foreign gods and the gunk that we've got. We're so constipated with that, amen. We can't even, nothing's being released from our, our bowels. There's no compassion. There's no love. There's no joy. Nothing, nothing is being released because we're constipated from junk. So we don't have no bowels of compassion and mercy. Amen. 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 If we will allow God to fill our mouths with this word of God, then that's what's going to come forth from us. Amen. That's what's going to come out, Amen. and we're going to people going to see that we belong to the Lord. They're going to see that there is a difference in that man. There's a difference in that sister. She looks like me. She walks like me. There's no difference in the way that our outer um, makeup is. But there is something else going on inside of her that's not happening in me. And until we can be able to make that difference, we're no different from the world. Amen? Anybody? Amen. Well, I look at it in the, I look at it in the sense that uh, we are so busy worshiping the creation. Amen. Worship the creation more than we worship the creator. Mm -hmm. And because of that, we put him on the back burner because everything else is shining in our eyes that we can't even see him over the things that we have chosen in our life to have love and, 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 and enjoyment out of. But he he didn't say that we would have a bed of roses, Amen. especially when we came to Christ, that we would have to, to work hard and we would have to make changes in our lives. And that's where the problem comes. Nobody wants to change. Amen. 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 Anybody else? It says, but my people would not. Heed my voice, and Israel would have none of me. So I gave them over to their own stubborn heart to walk in their own counsel. Who wants to be left? Who, who wants God to leave them to, to your own will? We're dangerous to ourselves. So I want to encourage us today to hear from God. To open yourself up and let God fill you with whatever it takes to make you who he would have us to be. Amen? Amen. Listen, listen to the voice of God. Sit quietly, and I know God will answer. I know he will speak. I know he will reprove. I know he will correct because I'm not the only one he's correcting. I am not the only one he's reproving. But Amen. when I sit quietly, when I sit quietly, God speaks. He, he speaks. You can't always have your mouth open and feel that we're going to hear from God. We need to close our mouth, amen, and then it's spiritually so open it so God can fill us with whatever we need for the inside of us, amen. And there are different needs, but God knows what I need. He knows what you need. He knows your trouble spots. He knows my trouble area. God knows exactly what we need. I may have a trouble area that you, you man, you, you, you got it. I may have an area that I've conquered that you haven't. Well, God knows that, and he knows what I need on the inside of me. He knows what you need. But we all have to be willing as a people to hear God. And as an individual, God, work on me. Work on me. 
Amen. And a lot of times we come and we say, oh, shucks, I sure wish the one soul was here to hear that word today. But you're present. So if you're present, isn't that word for you? Then you find yourself right there. Amen. But I bless the Lord, amen, for the word of God today. Amen. Um, amen. 